Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to our new podcast called Business, Life, and Morris, where we talk about all topics of business, all topics of life, and obviously you're gonna be talking about me, Johnny Morris. And today I have an incredible guest that I wanna share with you by the name of Dave Ray. Dave Ray is a veteran in the military. He is a public speaker. He is a business coach. And also he's an incredible person all the way around. So my business partner, confident in the background, Mr. Doc Rio, I see you there. But let's go ahead into our guest today, Mr. Dave Ray. Dave, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, Johnny, thank you so much. I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing great. So thank you for much. Thank you so much for joining us today on our podcast. And I got some questions I really want to dig deep down into you. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. Excellent. So I know you're a, a business coach. Can you tell us what pivotal moment in your life that you decided to become a business coach and a public speaking coach? Certainly. I was working as a government contractor for about 18 years doing war gaming for the Navy, the military here in San Diego. And it was a great job, very motivating and great mission, getting our Navy forces trained for their deployments overseas. But the one thing that it had was that we were employees. We were under the whims of our boss and we had our pay changed overnight one year. We had very little command or control over our own schedules. And I I loved the job. I did that for 18 years total. But at about the 15-year mark, I really started thinking I wanted something where I had a little bit more control. And I had been a business owner back in the 90s for about six years, and I loved that. And I thought, well, maybe I'll get back into business. And at the time, I decided I would like to get into some sort of business coaching, helping the other small business owners with their businesses and helping them maybe not have to struggle through the same things that I struggled with. So I got in touch with my former coach, my former business coach and mentor, and uh, worked out a deal where I would be working with her and uh, started off doing weekly masterminds for small business owners. And I did that for about about five and a half years until the recent where I pivoted into the public speaking. So that's how that came about. Oh, that's incredible. So obviously in the world of business, there's tons of business coaches. You know, I would say high level beginners, mid-level business coaches on Fortune 500 companies and all that, and to small businesses as well. What are your philosophies that you believe and principles that you bring in your business that differentiates you from a, another business coach that are, that's in this industry? Sure. Say that with my experience in the Navy, I was a naval aviator and we live and die by checklists and standard operating procedures. And so I brought that into my coaching. I, I really love putting things into systems, putting things into standardized procedures, putting checklists together and worksheets and spreadsheets. And you know, I, I think some business coaches will do some of that too, but I, I don't think really a lot of them put as much of a priority on it as I do. And so I've used that theory and that uh, philosophy to specifically with my public speaking training to make it easy and uh, stress-free to put everything into systems and standard procedures. So I train my, my public speaking students that same way. Excellent. So let's talk about transformation. Do you remember or recollect a transformation of a business owner or public speaker, public speaking person that kind of transformed their life? Do you remember anything like that? Or what's the biggest impact you believe you had in either a business or a public speaking person? Yes. Well, I actually have one of my recent clients from a few months back. She came to me. She was a vice president with a local nonprofit here in San Diego County, countywide. So it's a pretty good sized group. And she was very unsure of her speaking skills. Now she was Hispanic by birth and English was her second language. And she had risen through the ranks pretty well with her organization. So she was doing a great job, but she still had this, this fear or this trepidation that she wasn't a good speaker, wasn't good in English. And it was really weird because when I first met her, that didn't even come to my mind. I mean, she carried herself well, she spoke well, she had a good command of the English language, 
but she still had that feeling deep down inside that she wasn't a good speaker. So we talked about it a little bit and I gave her my impression just as a completely unbiased third party person. And I said, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you speak English. Great. I have no problems whatsoever. And sometimes getting third party ideas or confirmation is one of the best ways to, to make a transformation, show them that they're really not as bad as they think they are, they're not as deficient as they think they are. There's a thing that in the you know, business coaching world called imposter syndrome, where you don't think you're good enough, or you don't think yeah. you have the right qualifications, or you don't have that certification or that degree or that piece of paper that proves you can charge money to do something for someone. And oh, yeah. she had that, she had that here. She was very unsure of herself, but we talked about it and we looked at what she did need to fix, you know, what she, she did need to improve on. And, you know, she became one of my clients and we worked through the whole course and we did talk about some specific issues here and there that she needed to work on outside of just the basics. But overall, she had great success and she gave a couple of presentations to some bigger groups of people, some industry people, some of her corporate people here in San Diego, and actually got some really great feedback from her boss that, you know, she said, you know, I don't know what you've been doing, but this was a really great presentation you gave us today. I really, really loved it. And so that sometimes it's just the third party confirmation that yep. you're better than you think you are begins the transformation. It won't, it won't make it over, you know, it won't create the transformation all by itself but it definitely is a starting point. Oh, that's excellent. Congratulations to her and you. Awesome. Yeah. So knowing you outside of our podcast today, you know, I have a, a martial arts studio and I have a leadership program and yeah. one of our, one of our dedicated classes is public speaking. So our, our children come out and they work on public speaking skills and we have right. strategies in place, but for someone as yourself, as a public speaking coach, can you give me three tips that you give to your clients? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, in fact, I, I've actually been talking about this a little bit recently as well. The first thing I would say is that when you think of normal people in day-to-day -day work and they have a presentation, they have a, a, some sort of a meeting at work or they go to a church club and they have a, uh, update meeting on you know some sort of a fundraiser. The bar is pretty low for running meetings and giving speeches. the The general consensus out there is that things are not all that great. So if you're going to give a presentation, you don't have to be that good to be better than average. If you're just if you're just okay, you're average. If you're good, people will actually remember it and they'll say, oh, that was a really good meeting you ran for us. So that was a really good speech you gave us. So don't put so much pressure on yourself to be amazing. First off, you know, just start off slow and you don't have to be the type of person that goes and speaks at a, like at a college basketball stadium and there's 10,000 people there. You know, that's, that's not most people. Most people are just doing training meetings with their coworkers. They're giving update meetings to their fundraising committee. They're doing a presentation to their CEO, or maybe they're giving a three-minute speech to the city council. Those everyday mm -hmm. events that people have to deal with are great public speaking opportunities, and the bar is really low. So if you would just give a good presentation, you're above average already. I think secondly, when you are doing a presentation, you put a lot of anxiety on yourself because you're thinking it's kind of me against them. Mm -hmm. You know, most people, again, if you're in some sort of a business meeting or a update meeting or a small speech to maybe a group of rotary people that you're talking about your business to them on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. going to be in your court. They want you to have a good meeting. They want you to succeed. They want you to you know, give them a good presentation. So they're rooting for you. So it's not you against them. It's kind of you and them working together to have a really good presentation. So they're behind you. They want you to succeed. That thought should help you bring down some of the anxiety, I think. 
And let's see, lastly, third part. Let's see. I do have some notes here. Let me check my notes. And I can even talk about this later. But the other part is, oh, yes, absolutely. Don't be afraid to use notes. See, like I just did. <laughs> a lot of people think that they have to memorize a speech or they have to memorize a presentation. That's not really true because people, when they see you doing a presentation, they're not checking off whether or not you're using notes. They're not checking off whether or not you're looking at the PowerPoint slides. They want to get the information. They want to get in and get out, and they want it to be a successful meeting. So if you need to or want to use notes, you should feel very comfortable doing that. Don't think that you have to memorize your presentation. Now, certainly, I don't want you to be sitting there reading your notes or reading yeah. the PowerPoint slides word for word. I've actually seen that, and it just gets very uncomfortable. But using notes to jog your memory, like I just did, that's perfectly acceptable. So those three things in total should make you be a little less stressed out, a little bit, a little bit less anxious when you have to do a presentation. Okay. So let's switch it up into business strategies. For small business owners, what do you think are the common strategies um, that they use for the challenges that they face? Well, in my experience with not only my, my six years as a business coach, but working with the public speaking the last year or so, and even in my first business back in the 90s, I've seen one thing that has really caught my attention over the years. My, my training, my degree is in engineering, so it's not really in finance, but I, I really see the value and the obviousness of, of you know, good finances and tracking numbers. And that's one thing that's really surprised me that so many small business owners, they don't pay close enough attention to the finances, oh. the money, the cash flow, yeah. <laughs> expenses and incomes and tracking things yeah, and metrics, something. metrics of you know, all their operations. So I am always constantly talking about that to my business coach clients, you know, simple things like writing down all your miles and tracking your mileage because that's an enormous deduction on your income taxes every year. You know, checking how much you're spending on advertising or office supplies or subscriptions to software. And are you even using all those subscriptions that you're paying yeah. for? You know, I had several that I was paying for about two years ago that I realized I really wasn't using, so I canceled them. And that was saving me, I think, about $500 a year just on a couple, two or three different software packages. Okay. But a lot of the, the small business owners, they don't think of that stuff. So you need to get a good accountant or CPA. You want someone that's going to do more than just balance your books at the end of the month. You want someone that will look at your information and, and give you some ideas. How are you spending your money? How are you making your money in comparison to industry norms? And, you know, basically the same companies of the same size or the same industry. Are you spending enough on advertising or are you spending too much? How many different networking groups are you involved in? And what is the ROI? Are you actually getting referrals and getting jobs from those groups that you're spending money on going to breakfasts every month? Yeah. Things like that make a huge difference in the viability of a business. And a lot of the, you know, maybe younger or newer business owners, they have no real clue on those types of things. So that's really important. Get a good CPA or a good senior accountant that will work with you and help you spend your money wisely and help you make money efficiently. Okay. Awesome. In this ever-changing business environment, what do you do with your clients and yourself to stay adaptable to the ever-changing climate? I know AI right now is like the huge, huge, huge thing. There's so many different things that AI can do and, and other things as well that are always coming up. What do you do sure. to stay for your clients and yourself to stay adaptable to uh, ever changing? Yeah, I would say that it's the mastermind. Like I was running for the first five years of, of my business here. Mm -hmm. And I still do that with my speaking coach clients, you know, working through the meetings on you know the subject matter and the content is one thing, but also talking about what's going on with their business and sometimes their employees in a company. So 
what's going on in the office with their coworkers, and uh, helping them brainstorm among the group of members that are in the class mm -hmm. to come up with ideas to either fix issues that are going on or come up with different ideas that they can work with, with their, their boss or their subordinates, or if they're a business owner, things that they can do to you know, maybe come up with new clientele, new demographics that they can service. It's, uh, it's uh, the one thing that, you know, when I talk to people, I'm not the smartest guy in the room and no one person is going to be. But if you get several people together, you're going to be able to come up with great ideas by, by brainstorming and masterminding and having people talk about different ideas. And one idea will spur an idea from somebody else. And then that person's idea will spur another idea from the third person. And then that person you know, will spur another idea. And that fourth person's idea is the key to fix that problem that the first person started talking about. Okay. So it's crazy how that works, but it really it just has monumental impact on people running their business, especially sole proprietors or lower level managers that are moving up in the company and want to become a senior manager. Okay. So let's quickly stay on that subject of masterminds. I go to numerous masterminds throughout the year. I know you sure. host masterminds, you've attended, you were actually a facilitator, right? Of the of, of masterminds. Yes. In the ever-changing business world, obviously there's going to be standards, but do you think masterminds now are, I would say, watered down? Watered down. As, as people, there's, the masterminds are not being innovative. They're, you're, you're, you're going, but you're not getting an ROI from that mastermind. It, right, you can meet the power sure. of large numbers. You can meet as many people as you want, and you have more chances of success or finding something. But do you think that a lot of people that are hosting masterminds now are just hosting it to host it, or actually is people that are attending getting something valuable from those masterminds? Well, you have to remember that the power of a mastermind is it's two parts: it's in the meeting and it's out of the meeting. The friendships and alliances that you build with the people in the group, mm -hmm. they don't stop with the meeting ends. You know, in fact, in the ones that I've held over my years, a lot of times people will support each other on their family events or their personal events. You know, we would travel to other cities to watch some of our clients in air guitar contests or just off the wall things like that, that you would never think about in a business mastermind. So it's that kind of support that you get. It's kind of subjective in terms of it, it doesn't necessarily bring in like, you know, cash, but it's part of the experience and part of the benefit of a mastermind where you're helping people solve questions in the meeting of their business, but also supporting them in their personal life outside the meeting. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think you get the big benefits and, you know, there are masterminds maybe that don't do that. They stay really, really focused on just, you know, the, the one meeting a month or the one meeting a week. Mm -hmm. And I think those are going to be the ones where you really don't get the big ROI. Yeah. But if you can integrate both the, the in-meeting stuff and the extra meeting stuff, mm -hmm. that's where you get some real, real big benefits. Yeah. I believe in, in my years of attending masterminds is one is like I said, there's not much that's going to happen right then and there. You know, you're not, not going to do business deals at, at the moment, right? Sure. But you get to nurture and, and start an embassy stage of relationship exactly. building. Exactly. Yes. You know, that's and true. then outside of those masterminds, that's where you start cultivating and, 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 and working together. Or at least, you know, outside that you guys can work on something towards the future. So yep. <clears throat> with, with your business coaching, and, and your clients, how would you measure and how do you measure success for yourself and for your coaching clients? Well, I think it comes in, in two ways. It's subjective and objective. So the subjective is, you know, how do they feel when they're going into a presentation? Are they getting over their anxiety? Are they feeling more confident? Are they trying new things? Are they feeling confident enough to to you know, think outside the box and, and maybe push the boundaries, even if they're talking to their coworkers 
and they have you know, weekly training meetings that have been going the same way every single week for years and years and years. And now maybe they try a little different idea. You know, they, they advertise you know, free candy for the people that show up on time, or they play a game, or they do something that's maybe more fun than they've experienced in the past. And if they feel confident and comfortable enough to try that, you know, that's a very subjective success right there. Also, you know, you're going to get feedback. Like my friend, my, my vice president from the charity organization that I spoke about earlier, she got direct comment from her boss that she thought she did a really, really great job. She didn't know, you know what she was doing or who she was working with, but she really loved what she really loved what she was doing. And so those types of comments and feedback from your coworkers, your own clients, your boss, that's a really good indicator that what you're doing is actually working. Okay. With your coaching clients, business clients as well, what are some ways or do you incorporate or do you encourage personal development into your coaching for public speaking and for a business? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I feel that one of my main benefits that I give to my clients and, and one of the assets that I bring to the table is I'm a curator of all kinds of information. So whether it's books, audiobooks, articles, blogs, subscriptions to different internet influencers. Mm -hmm. When we're doing our weekly sessions and something comes up that, you know, shows that there's a need somewhere on someone to maybe learn something or get some, some support in something, I will be able to give them, you know, information on stuff that I'm using, you know, people that I'm subscribing to, or even in particular, there's three or four speaking coaches that I watch on the internet and I look at their articles and their videos. And so I've even given links to those types of assets and, and those types of documents and things to my clients, to my friends at the chamber and the different networking groups that I'm in so that they can build up you know, some sort of self-development or some sort of self-confidence or just get a bigger, bigger variety of information that they can put in their, their toolbox to yeah. use. So I, I am definitely big on self-development and bringing in all sorts of other information besides just what I'm talking. Because again, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I can certainly learn from others and my clients can, can learn from the, the assets that are out there on the internet and, and books and audio books and all kinds of things. Okay. We spoke, you spoke a little bit earlier and just recently about the chamber. We're both members of the East County Chambers of Commerce here in San Diego. Yes. When someone starts a business, what do you think are the top three reasons they should be a member of their local chamber? Well, if you're talking about starting a business, you need visibility. You need access to prospects and you need access to advice. And I think the chamber really is a great way to do that. I'm involved with two or three different chambers. Okay. And I've gotten a lot of support and a lot of great help and advice from the chamber members as well as the chamber staff. But when I first started, I got several of my first couple of clients were, were all from the chamber, from the chamber networking group. And that's usually a great place to not only get clients, but also meet other successful and motivated business people that want to succeed. They want, the, they want you to succeed. They want you know, the whole community to succeed. So they're there helping each other and you know, whether it's advice or whether it's a lead on a potential client or even just a lead on something that you need. Maybe you need to start getting your, your income taxes done. You, know, you're not, you, know, you don't want to do them yourself anymore. You want to get an actual tax accountant to do them. You know, leads on those types of things that you can do for your business and your personal life, both, are always going to be great ways that you can use the, the resources of the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Now. What is your opinion or what's the difference, do you believe, between a business coach and a consultant? Well, basically, a consultant is going to do things for you. They're going to write maybe a business plan or they're going to come up with 
templates that you can use. Like I've got a template that I give people for writing press releases. If you're going to have an event, you're going to have a seminar, or even if your PTA at school is going to have a fundraiser. I've got a, a template that I've used many, many times to advertise that and to put the word out in newspapers and local radio stations. Mm -hmm. The coach, just think of like a high school football coach. He's there to, to get the best out of you and to push you further than you want to push yourself to get you to, you know, kind of be better than you think you can be. And so I, I've actually specifically worked on my business name to be Dave Ray Coaching and Consulting because I don't want to be yeah. stuck into one side of that equation. I really want to be able to be both for the people that need it. You know, some people are going to need me to, to hand them a, a you know, completely written press release or completely written blog post. Okay. And other people are going to want to do it themselves with, you know, just having me guide them. Okay. So it really is both sides of the workload. So with, with the consulting, like you said, you can give someone a fully written press release. Yep. But looking towards the future of, of business coaching, business consulting on the consulting side, do you think that would probably lessen with the power of AI? It's someone like a powerful chat GPT that can do themselves? Probably in, in a lot of ways. And I do want to caution everybody that you have to be very careful when you use AI for content creation. I primarily right now use AI for idea mm -hmm. creation, a very little bit of content, but you always want to sanity check it because you don't know where that AI is getting its information from. And there have been documented cases, even in, in news stories recently, that AI came up with a bunch of information that was completely erroneous, Talk, talking about courtroom cases that didn't exist. And it might give you information that's contrary to you know, the, the, the experts that are out there regarding certain, certain ways to handle certain types of situation or, you know, maybe certain business practices that are either speculative or, or could be, you know, up for grabs. And maybe you want to do something one way in one situation, but you want to do it a completely different way in a different situation. So you don't know what that AI is coming up with. And you have to really look at it and say, okay, this makes sense. This doesn't make sense. or this is applicable to my clientele or this isn't applicable to my clientele. So I wouldn't maybe use that idea. But you really have to be the man in the loop anytime you're using AI for content creation. Okay. So let's talk about the future of business coaching. What do you think, where do you think that industry is going to go in the next one to five to 10 years? In my industry, I know with, with COVID past us now, I've seen a lot of gurus that popped out of nowhere. Like just like yes. during the pandemic, there's people that popped out of nowhere. And I'm like, wait a minute. I, I know you like you're, we're going through the same thing. So how did you become the guru when we both never, ever been through a pandemic and, and, and you're coaching people to be successful through, through this hard times. What do you think the, or where do you think the industry is going in the next several years? Well, what I've seen over the last few years is that the industry, coaching industry, is getting inundated with lots and lots of people and business coaches, all sorts of holistic healing coaches, physical fitness coaches, life coaches. Yeah, everyone's a life coach nowadays. And people coming out of college or out of the military with just, you know, three or four or five years of experience, they're, they're life coaches. You know, some of them, Yes, they've got a lot of good ideas and they've had a lot of success in where they've been so far. But the, I guess the point is that there's so many people out there nowadays. And obviously with the online training, with the Zoom and the Meets and the Teams, that's opened up a whole world of opportunity for people. My, my, my masterminds used to be in person, together, in a restaurant sitting around a table and, you know, to some degree that kind of limited me to people who were locally in the area that would be willing to drive 30 minutes at six o'clock in the morning to come to breakfast with other people. You know, now on Zoom, 
you can talk to people in every continent yeah. in the planet. I mean, even including Antarctica. They've got a station down there with internet access. So basically, that just opens up a world of opportunity for so many people. You have to really figure out a way to differentiate yourself from the masses. Okay. And you know, so that's going to be your personal experience, your personal philosophies, your personal attitudes, and you know, how you like to deal with people. Like for me, I, I really tend to be more nurturing and more supportive. I'm like you know, my clients' biggest cheerleaders. I've done things like, you know, buy people vaporizers and HEPA filters when they've had either allergies or some sort of physical ailment and drop them off to their homes. Wow. So, you know, different people are different and you have to find someone that resonates with you, you know, both from the coach to the client and from the client to the coach. Okay. But I think the, the opportunities are there, you know, through the technology online having online coaching, I've, I've taken advantage of, and I do you know, even currently take advantage of several coaching programs that are online only. One gentleman is in Toronto, Canada. One gal's in Boise, Idaho that I, that I work with on a regular basis online, weekly or monthly or quarterly, whatever it happens to be. But online training and coaching is, you know, is basically the new thing, you know, compared to, you know, Five years ago, 10 years ago, where everything was face-to-face, one-on-one, either you, know, you go to their house, they come to your house, you go to a coffee shop to meet someone, you know, talk over a table about whatever you're teaching them. But online has opened up a lot of great vistas for, for anybody, especially the coaching industry. Yeah, the power of um, technology that we have. Yeah. One thing that I really have taken a lot of advantage of over the last several years outside of the online coaching is the speech recognition. I, I write probably 90% of what I write, uh, I do it through speech to text dictating into my phone. Oh, wow. And I, I set it up as an email to myself and I you know, work on whatever article, my weekly emails that I send out or a, a new class I want to teach or a presentation I'm working on, like at the chamber. I will write it out by dictating it to myself, speech to text on my phone, and then email it to myself. And that's the first draft. Yeah. And I save a lot of time doing that because I've, I've written pages and pages and pages, even just sitting on an airplane, basically just dictating an email to myself and gotten a whole presentation put together just while I'm on, a, on an airplane. Phone, yes. And then I basically email it to myself and that's the first draft. Oh, that's incredible. I'll have to adopt that, uh, that style right there. <laughs> for all the stuff. Yeah, I do that for everything. I love it. so much time. That's excellent. Dave, I would definitely want to thank you for your times. I definitely got some incredible information from you. I'm pretty, pretty sure our audience will get some incredible information for you. If someone is looking to get in contact with you, what's a good way to get in contact with you? Sure. I've got all the basics. I'm on LinkedIn with Dave Aldo Ray. I do most of my blogs and stuff on my Facebook page and my LinkedIn page. So they can look up me and you know, Dave Ray on Facebook. I don't know if we can put the links to that in the, the show. Yes. But also my, my website, DaveRayCoachingAndConsulting.com. So just DaveRayCoachingAndConsulting.com. And you can see some of my articles, see some of my videos see some of the things that we offer in both the business coaching and the public speaking training. Yes, I really am getting into the public speaking much more now in just the last year. And uh, my new mission, if I can call it that, is to eradicate death by PowerPoint from the face of the earth. Oh, okay. So oh, I think people sure. have, uh, are probably fairly familiar with that. They've sat through some bad PowerPoint presentations. I want to eradicate death by PowerPoint from the face of the earth. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All yeah, right. Thank you so much. Right. I appreciate that. I really appreciate your time, sir. I definitely want you to come back and be a guest if you if you guys are up to it. If you're up to it, I'd, I'd love to have absolutely. you again. All absolutely. right. So once again, Dave, thank you so much for your time. And I want you to enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. And thanks to Doc Rio for facilitating this great opportunity. I appreciate both yeah. you guys. Thank you, sir. All right, everybody, that's what we got for this episode of Business Life with Morris. Guys, I'll see you guys on the next episode.
Ciao.